Hello and welcome to Griffin Art. So today I want to show you how to make these cross-shaped florets out of cold porcelain. Now I am going to be using a template to help with consistency of size, but that is free to download from my website at griffinart.co.uk. So if you want to use it yourself, please feel free to just go and get that. Okay, so I'll just set these completed florets to one side for the time being so that we can get started. Now I'm just going to be using a piece of cellophane in order to allow me to see the design and use the cold porcelain on top of it. That doesn't have to be anything fancy at all. It, this this um, particular piece of cellophane probably came with a greetings card inside it or something like that. You can use specific cellophane off rolls, but it's, it's not necessary. Now I'm just going to move this down a little bit because I'm a bit worried about glare and whether you're going to be able to see. So hopefully if I work about at that point, you should be able to see without any glare off the lighting. Now we are going to be working in layers for this design. So the very first layer we're going to be working on is this large circle. So the very bottom layer, if I turn that over, you can see this actually isn't quite dry. I made it yesterday but this is the center layer that we are going to be working on to start with. And for that, we are going to be using this larger outside circle on the design here. Now, bearing in mind, there are very symmetrical aspects to this design. And also, if I want to make more than one of them, maybe for a piece of furniture, I do want them to be a similar size. So with that in mind, I know it seems pedantic, but I am actually weighing all my pieces of porcelain. So this very first piece is three and a half grams worth of wet porcelain. Now, I'm just using a jeweler's digital scale for this, and they're not uh, expensive to come by. You know, I think I bought this off eBay for about uh, five pounds, and I'll be using that to weigh that piece of porcelain. Actually, I'll put that down in front of you in a moment so that you can see the actual weight. Okay, so I'm hoping that if I just set that down there, you should be able to see the weight come up here. If not, I will just tell you what it is. So I'll turn that on, set it to zero. I have already checked this weight, so it should be right. It should come up as three and a half grams. So let's just pop that on there. There you go. If you can see that at all, that's three and a half grams. And that's what we're going to be using for that base layer. So I've just started out by rolling that into a rough ball shape. And I'm now just going to place it on that template area and start to flatten it out. So we're just using that outside guideline there. Now I don't always cover the edge of that outline completely, um, simply because when you start to cut into it, it will expand outwards anyway. So it sorts itself out. And it's easier if you can see the line. I'm hoping that, that this will be all right. It's not easy working on camera because I normally get my head above it. And of course, you don't want to see the back of my head. So there. there we go. That's about right. So if I bring that up to the camera, it's not quite as round as I would normally get it. But it gives you an idea of what you're aiming for. Okay. Now, the first tool that I'm going to be using is a balling tool. And it's the size that I've chosen is smaller than the actual size in the center of that sphere. And I'm just going to roughly mark out the center. Now, if that starts to stick a bit, you can add a little bit of cold cream. I'm, I'm frequently use Nivea cream just to stop the porcelain sticking to the tools. So, that I'm just going to add a little bit to that tool so that I can press it down a bit more. And I don't know whether you can see that that has already domed that out because that porcelain that I've pushed out has got to go somewhere, so it's going out to that outside edge. So we can now slide that over to the actual design and it will sit over the top there because we need to mark out these outside edges. And I'm just going to do one on camera because it is going to be a bit tricky. Now, I've got a series of metal tools and I would recommend that you get some tools if you're going to be doing a lot of cold porcelain work. Um, they do help a lot. I've found that my work has improved with the addition of appropriate tools. So, um, you know, do think about that. So 
So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark, not actually on the very edge, but inside the edge, roughly where that's coming to, so that I can see, hopefully, the light. And then I can mark from, looking back from here, that's the center point, I can mark a center point. And I'm just going to cut a little triangle to indicate where I need to remove some of the porcelain. So then I've got another tool here and that is you can see it's shaped like that, which is very useful for just cutting in to, to this piece of work. So I've opted to go for that. I mean, other shaped tools would work, but uh, you know, you've just got to find what you're comfortable with, really. I'm just going to reinforce that line and just sort of make a line. You want to leave a reasonable depth underneath here, so about probably two mil, just under eighth of an inch or something like that. I'm just going to cut and then I can remove that excess porcelain. And at that stage, I'm still continuing with this tool. I'm just going to start to flatten that area out a little bit. I'm trying to keep that circle in place as well. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember that this is going to be covered up. It's just about neatening it up making those edges nice and nice and neat as well. So that's really all you've got to do for that first phase. But you need to do that for each of these four um, little cross sections. So I'll do the other three remaining off camera and then come back to you. Right, so I've now removed all four sections in preparation for those cross sections. I'm just going to bring that up a little bit closer for you so that you can get a better view of that and you can see what you're aiming for. And if I turn it on its side, you'll hopefully be able to see that there's still quite a depth of porcelain left. I didn't remove the whole of that section. I've just removed the surface layer so that when we come to fit those cross sections in, they will slot nicely in between the dome's shape in that circle. So I'm hoping that that's enough for you to get an idea of what you need to be doing to get that shape to this stage. Right, so now you have got this shape to where it needs to be. You need to give it time to firm up and, and dry, not necessarily entirely, but so that when you come to put that second layer in place, you are not going to be knocking this layer all out of shape. Now I have already prepared one previously so that you can see a dry version. And I've also started to put some cross sections onto another sample. So I'll get that set up and then I'll come back to you. Right, so this is one that I've done before and it's actually had time to dry out overnight. Now if I flip that over to the other side, you can see actually it is still quite wet. But it is sufficiently dry and firm on this top section to enable you to work with it. Now just as a tip, when you start uh, working on this project with a piece of cellophane, make sure that that piece of cellophane is large enough to take the whole design. I don't know whether you can see here, but if I move this down onto here, actually there's a section of that design that won't fit on that cellophane. What that means is that I need to allow this section to dry out to such an extent that I can remove it from the cellophane and start on a larger piece of cellophane. That does actually mean that I'm wasting time because I, at this stage I could have got on with that piece if I had used a larger piece of cellophane. So that's just something for you to bear in mind. So this is the other sample that I was talking about and I have already put two of the cross sections on. And again, I've left these to dry off a bit because if I start to do these other items of cross sections, then if these are still soft, I'm likely to knock them out of shape. So I prefer to work in pairs. It's entirely up to you, but that's the approach that I take. Okay, so let's try and get that set up so that we can get on with the next layer here. So I'm just going to line that up on the template before I start. So I'm going to be working on this end here, which is closest to me, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to manage that on camera to the best of my ability. 
it may not be as neat as normal so please bear with me now the first thing that I'm going to do because this is dry porcelain I'm going to dampen it down again just because it will provide some adhesion and whilst I'm getting the piece of porcelain ready hopefully that'll soak into that original dry piece and just make it slightly sticky again. Now for this second layer the weight of cold porcelain that I'm using is actually two grams and I'm just going to start to shape that. Okay we're going to get a bit of a cross shape. Now I'll come you just need to bear in mind that you do want it raised above this section here slightly but it you don't want it to be too high. So I'll show you the sort of finished steps when we start. So all I'm doing is making sort of a, um, a rhombus shape, I think we used to call that in school. And then I'll press that down a bit on both ends. And then if you sort of press both edges in, you can see, I hope you can see what I've done there. Then it means that you can start to pull out, press down there, pull out, and you start to make a, a sort of a cross shape as well. So that's maybe of help to you, I don't know. But that's basically, you need to get to this sort of shape. That's what you're aiming for. And it's worth working on this to smooth out those edges as much as you can at this stage, because it's far easier to do it in your hands than it is once it's down on the piece. So just mess around until you're happy with it, really. And check it for size. Just put this up there. I think that's a bit long, to be honest. Let's have a look. Yes, so if I set that in there, we're not too far off, look. And you do want to try and keep it as balanced as possible so that you've got even distribution on both sides. If this side's slightly bigger, you know, try and push some of that porcelain onto the other side so that you end up with a balanced shape before you start. If you've got a balanced shape and a symmetrical shape at the beginning, it's going to be a whole lot easier for you as you work forward. Just make sure that the rest of the piece is lining up. Don't worry that it's slightly smaller. It's because cold porcelain shrinks as it dries. So that will happen with this piece. Always work to the size of the template as much as you can. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take one of my little tools and just try and I'm just slotting into that edge there along that hard piece because I just want to make sure that the porcelain is dropping into that little space as much as possible. Now I don't think I'm going to get this perfect because it's quite difficult without getting above it but I will do the best to give you an idea. All right, So you can see that shape. And again, there's a number of tools that you can use. These silicon tools are brilliant with porcelain. It, they don't stick to it. I, I do still use cold cream, to be fair, with them. But they, you know, they are great tools. So I would definitely recommend them. Uh, it just does away with some of that stickiness. Okay, I'm not going to mess around too much. I'm just trying to give you an idea here. It's not necessarily going to be perfect. So the other tool that I've got, which I find really useful, is I've got, if I, if I show you, so this is like a bit of golf, golf club at this end, and then it's one that's sort of similar shape, but it's flattened, it's the opposite direction. That's a really useful tool. So I'm going to use that tool to basically mark the center line. And it's worth being careful to try and get that center line right. because it's again, you're, you're trying to keep those amounts of porcelain even. So here, again, it's about sort of giving it an eye and thinking where do you need to cut in. So this is where you're getting that shape in. So you're just cutting around. You can form it later. So you're just doing the same on both sides. So I'll do the same this side to just try and make sure it's even and symmetrical. It'll be a bit rough to start with, but, you know, we'll get there. So that's the first phase. And you can fiddle, you probably, if you're anything like me, 
you'll fiddle for hours with it but um, that's up to you now the first thing I like to do actually and I'm not going to worry about the template in this instance is to just turn it round and I've got this um, I need some cold cream on this but I've got this very it's almost like a paintbrush and it's it's lovely it's got a lovely point on it what that means is that I can get that into that groove and just smooth that down a bit so we're getting a little bit of a, a valley in that center area and again as I say I'm not going to fiddle for ages because I can't see that well on on this um, position here so the next thing that I'm going to do is to take another ball tool this is quite a small one as you can see and I'm going to just start to in fact no the best tool for this at the moment will return to this one to start with and then I'm just going to pull down some of this porcelain and again we're going to do the same on both sides and we want to keep the an even thickness so you're just trying to make sure both sides are equal as far as possible so you we've got this valley going on here we're now looking to get a mountain going on down here all will become clear so and you don't want to go down too low because you're going to be dropping that ball tool in there. So you, you do need to keep some thickness. You're just trying to get a difference in height between these two. So having done that, now we can go to this little ball tool. And I will be just, first of all, dropping it in at the ends on either side. And then I can start to work my way up a little bit. And actually what I've found with porcelain, or cold porcelain I should probably say, is that you are constantly pushing so if i push there it, it's push it automatically shoves it into this other space that i've already shaped so i have to push it back so you're constantly nudging it in different directions so once you've got those rough shapes in place you can then work on the end one and i tend to try and get everything in place first i'm just trying to see where that um the end of that template is now the other thing is that if you need to if you finding when you get to this stage that too much of your template is on show then when you do this last move you would pull forward but if in as is this as is the case in this case I'm going to push back because I've got more porcelain at that end than I need all right so push back and then I've got another tiny balling tool you can see that very tiny and I'm just going to put that in the end here just to emphasize that and then it really is a case of just fiddling so again I'm just showing you the tools as I'm using them so back to this one just shaping it I prefer to get a more triangular shape on there cut into there you can see how that's pushed that all out it's just you're always reworking reworking so I'll go with a smaller balling tool so I've got this on the other end of that tiny one I have now got a slightly bigger one and again I will use my coil cream to help with that stickiness and just keep working it and pushing away to get the shape that you want so you almost getting this nose shape going on here because you've got the bridge before it spreads out so once I've got that rough shape again I'll turn it around I'll take my thin little tool again and I'm going to start to work that through here again and just keep gradually nudging that porcelain where I want it to be and it's feather light feather light touches 
just to shape it because you're only just pushing it. I actually think in terms of how it behaves, it almost forms a skin early on. And then it's got all this softness inside, almost like a bag of gels that you could form a shape with, but you, you, you know, you can't break the skin of that bag. All you can do is push around the contents. And I think cold porcelain is a little bit like that. So that's, that is, I think that's probably enough to give you an idea. I really need to get off camera to, to work it and, and make it really neat. So I will continue to do that before it gets too dry. One thing I'm going to show you though here, because there's been a little bit of drying going on here. Now, if you get a sensation here, which you sometimes do with cold porcelain, where there's maybe a crack or something in it, and you can't get that out very easily with a tool, you don't want to apply too much water but if you apply a very little water to that area, then you should be able to smooth it out more easily. So that's just a tip there for you. So I shall do that and then I can work that area. All right, so I'm hoping that that's given you enough of an idea of how you would approach that. It does need work, it's not perfect, but um, I will do that off camera finish off camera and then come back to you. Right, so I've now finished that second layer completely and given it enough time to dry off so that we can tackle that third and final layer. Now I do just want to show you something. This final layer is just this little centerpiece here. Now when I first did this project, I used a piece of porcelain that was one gram in size and I decided that was just too big and bulky. Now that is just a matter of opinion and this is why I'm showing you the difference. So in these two cases I halved that section and will continue for this particular video to use a piece of porcelain that is just 0.5 grams, a so half a gram in size and weight, weight rather than size. So, you know, it's up to you which you prefer to use. If you want to go slightly bigger, that's absolutely fine. You can go somewhere in the middle. It's entirely up to you. But I will stick to this size. And as I say, that's half a gram in weight. Okay. Now, as we did earlier, because we're dealing with dry porcelain in the center here, and that's where we want to place our final piece of porcelain, I'm just going to wet that area down just to provide better adhesion. don't want too much water because otherwise you know it'll go all over the place and you'll get um, a little bit of slipperiness that doesn't look very good. So the first thing that I've done is made that little piece of porcelain into a fairly round shape and you do want to get that reasonably good um, because that's going to make life easier for you because you're aiming for a round shape in the end. Now the second thing that I'm going to do is just going to form a cone shape underneath just because I want that to sit into that hole so I hope you can get that idea. Now I'm just going to place that in the centre there and just start to flatten it out as we did with that very original piece really. It depends how far you want to spread it around. You know, you could spread it flatter and have less dome in the middle, or you can keep it slightly less round in diameter and have a more dome shape. It's, you know, it's art. There's no right or wrong. You can do whatever you like. So that's basically finished. Now you can work around. Sometimes I work around with a tool not essential just to make sure that you know the edges are joining with the piece below quite nicely it's not always necessary so that is an option for you and I'll leave that choice up to you so that's basically the end of this tutorial but there was um, one thing I meant to tell you earlier there's always something I forget uh, so I'm just going to cover that now so if I can cast your mind very quickly all the way back to the beginning and this little shape here if you end up with one of these shapes that is totally dried out, um, you may end up needing to put a little bit of cold porcelain, tiny, tiny bit, on the bottom just to hold it in place on the cellophane 
because if you don't do that you're going to be trying to hold it in place whilst you work with that first cross section because it's the wet cold porcelain that holds the item onto the cellophane now just to sort of try and demonstrate that so if I've got a piece of dry cold porcelain and I'm trying to work with it especially if it's a small piece every time I'm trying to keep it on the template you know it's it, not only is the template sliding about but so is this so you just take a very tiny piece of porcelain you know maybe about two mil in diameter and just put it under the bottom and that will then hold it in place and it'll en enable you to work more freely that's another tip i meant to tell you earlier so you know now that you now you've got that Okay then, that just leaves me to remind you that this template here is available for you free on my website at griffinart.co.uk and I will leave a link in the description area so that you can get to that more easily. And that's it, so thank you very much for watching this video and, and for those subscribers who've been with me for so long, I do appreciate you all. Thank you for your support.